Live pictures of Key West, Florida, where the rains have already come, the outer bands of the first storm of this hurricane season just about upon Florida, courtesy of our friends over at EarthCam, where you can check out views around the world. We'll see how long the signal stays up during the storm. This storm is going to make landfall near Fort Myers four days into the season, up to a foot of rain, which in Key West means uh, sometimes all the way up to the windows there. Now, this is the moment we would tell you what category the hurricane is, one through five. Turns out scientists say 50 years of hurricane science is now all wrong, and it is time for a new scale. Think about it. Hurricane Katrina only got to category three. It killed nearly 1,800. When Hurricane Florence went from Cat 4 to Cat 1, thousands decided not to evacuate. Then they spent days waiting for rescue. Scientists now say the old system works well for boats out at sea, but not so well for all of us here on land, and we need something new. Phil Klotzbach studies and teaches these things at Colorado State University and joins us now. Uh, all right, Phil, uh, what is that, what's all us in the media going to do if we can't talk about what category it is? <laughs> Well, we're saying that we actually should still keep the category system. So the Saffir Simpson scale, um, which has been used to categorize hurricanes for about 50 years now, is based just on the maximum winds of the storm. And that's obviously super helpful. It's really important to know how strong the winds are, but it doesn't tell you anything about the size of the storm. Um, and so typically, um, larger storms are going to have more storm surge associated with them, which is one of the big drivers of the damage that these storms cause. So what we're advocating for is to actually use the pressure at the center of the hurricane, so in the eye, to categorize the hurricanes on a one to five scale. So in that case, for example, you mentioned Hurricane Katrina. It was a category three when it made landfall by wind, but when it was, uh, if you were to look at the pressure that the storm had when it made landfall, it was a category five. Katrina was a very, very large storm and obviously had a tremendous amount of storm surge associated I'm, with it, up to about 25 feet I've been of out storm surge. Whenever I've been out covering these things, um, and I'm all, used to be the guy on the beach, it was kind of fun back in the day. Um, I know I'm sure you remember that as well, which is, you know, it's never the wind that really kills and causes all the destruction. It's the flooding and the rain and everything else. And we always talked back then about how, how slow or fast a storm moves. Does this new scale take that into effect? Yeah, so this is actually just a very simple scale. All it uses is the pressure at the center of the storm. And so it doesn't, you're not really going to be able to get everything jam packed into one number but what we're arguing is that you can if you can get the size of the storm in addition to its intensity that will really help um hit not only basically the the um basically it will help with the storm surge factor but also the larger storms are going to have a much larger area that is impacted by storm don't, don't you worry all oh. the all of a sudden the tv are going to go okay on the new scale it's a four but really come on guys uh, it only has winds of, you know, 95 miles an hour. So we, would, we wouldn't even really care about this before. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so um, what we argue is that that storm may not have the strongest winds associated with it, but you're going to get a, a tremendous amount of storm surge. And a great example of that is actually Hurricane slash Superstorm Sandy, which made landfall in New Jersey. It was, um, it was officially post-tropical, but it was a hurricane until a couple hours before it made landfall. It was about a Category 1 equivalent for winds. It didn't have super strong winds associated with it, but it was an enormous storm. and had a huge amount of storm surge associated with it. And again, uh, Phil, Phil, how, how storms get, really wreak havoc. How do you make this happen, right? The, is, it, is it the National Hurricane Center that, that ends up deciding this, or do we need an act of Congress or God? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, right now we're, we're kind of in the, uh, hopefully in the scientific convincing part of this. Um, so we've uh, published papers showing that the pressure correlates better with the damage that hurricanes cause oh, as well who, as the fatalities who's against that hurricanes this? cause. And it's also it, much easier to measure. Who, who's against this? Is, the, is there a Saffir Simpson lobby uh, <laughs> around that really still likes this? Well, and so originally the Saffir Simpson scale, it's always been based off of wind, but it actually had a pressure component at one point as well. Huh. So it's not that far out of the realm of possibility. I think really kind of what needs to be done is to, you know, basically have more, basically more research to kind of help show that the uh, the pressure is a better indicator overall the damage huh. that these storms do cause in wind. You know, Phil, it's, all, it's always fun to have these conversations with somebody who's really passionate about it and uh, understands uh, the topic. Uh, evidently, it's going to be a busy hurricane season, so we'll have you back to talk about it. You're, you're more interesting than some of the guys at the Hurricane Center, all right? <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate being yeah. on. No, it was great. Thanks, Phil. Good to see you. Thanks.
Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.